Uh, so my name is Stefan Kojaharov. I'm the uh, founder and CEO of uh, Chatbots Life. And we'll talk today about how chatbots and AI are going to revolutionize Uh, so my name is Stefan Kojaharov. I'm the uh, founder and CEO of uh, Chatbots Life. And we'll talk today about how chatbots and AI are going to revolutionize uh, the way we get everyday things done. Uh, now, my background is in um, product design, and I'm looking at it from the point of view of user experience. So a little bit about me. Um, right now, we help companies uh, and bots um, on the, on the side of product design, and we're sharing a lot of our insights along the way. So right now, uh, Chatbots Life is the number one place to learn about bots online, and overall, I think we're number two in terms of all bot pub publications. So one of, the one of the questions that a lot of, may of my customers ask is, why bots? Why are we building bots in the first place, and why is this even a thing right now? So the simple answer is consumption. Um, if you look at the way uh, bots, are, the way apps are consumed, you'll see that there's a huge difference between uh, the way apps are consumed versus other things like songs and uh, music, websites, or even the amount of books that you, a person reads in a year. So on average, uh, the average person uses about three or four different uh, apps per day, and those apps tend to be the same apps every single day. But when you look at the movies that we watch or even the purchases that we make on Amazon, all those things have a really big long tail effect. Um, what, does these, what this means ultimately is that uh, a few apps get all the traffic, they get all the monetization, and there's very little monetization down the line. So why have apps failed us? Apps have failed us for two big reasons. The first one is the way the human mind works. So at any one time, um, the human mind can hold up to four items at one time simultaneously. So we have like a, a very limited RAM. So what this means is that <laughs> use cases that um, have an everyday uh, applicability are really easy for us to remember. There, it's far more likely that we're gonna remember Coca-Cola or Pepsi or Nike or, or, or Gucci over brands that we might use once or twice a year. Now, some of the really big companies, they spend a gazillion dollars like Geico, so they can get in front of us all the time that way, we will remember their names. Um, but this isn't, this isn't practical. Apps can't do this. Companies can't do this all the time. The money just isn't there. Um, the other big reason why apps have failed us is unknown unknowns. Right now, there's over 2 million apps on iOS and Android. There's so many apps. There's a lot of really good technology out there. You will never know about most of it. Uh, we just don't have the mental bandwidth, and we don't have the ability to discover this technology. Um, again, what this means is there is ultimately no long tail effect for apps, uh, unlike other items. Now, there is good news. <laughs> and the good news is that uh, bots can help us solve this problem. They can help us solve the problem of unknown unknowns and also the problem of um, our inability to remember. So before I get to the solution, I'm going to share with you what I think the, the future of bots looks like. This is what I'm seeing in the space. So in the near future, very near future, uh, we're going to be living in a fully integrated world technologically. Uh, what that means is that technology will become a seamless part of our everyday life. Um, the most basic things that we do will, will be powered by technology, sometimes not beknownst to us. So one of the first things that we're going to see, and we're already seeing this, and that is a single entry point. So right now, chances are that you have a... Um, more than one email address. You probably have more than one calendar app. You probably have your Word documents all over the place on Google, on, on two different computers. Uh, you probably have multiple productivity apps like Trello and Basecamp and others. And as a result of this, your technology, all your stuff is all over the place. So when it comes to time to get things done, it, it's pretty inefficient. Um, we're already seeing with, uh, with Echo, for example, that you'll be able to um, find out what's on your schedule, and it'll be able to talk to uh, all the different apps that you have going on. So bots could become a very simple single entry point. The other cool thing is AI and automation. So uh, pretty soon, when it comes to scheduling things like appointments, it'll happen automatically. Right now, if you and I were to schedule an appointment, we would have to talk back and forth a bunch of times, find a good day, a good time, and so on. But in the future, my bot will talk to your bot, and the whole thing will happen seamlessly, automatically, without our input. 
The other cool thing is uh, IoT, and um, essentially everything's going to be able to learn. It's going to be able to learn from your behavior, and it's going to be able to talk to you. So the refrigerators of the future will be able to order eggs for us when we run low. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, they'll be able to uh, order eggs for us. If you have a plumbing problem in your house and your house brings a leak, uh, your house will call a plumber for you. Uh, that way you don't come home to a disaster. Um, now, one of the questions I get is like, how is all this going to work together? What is this? How is this going to How are we going to get to this point? And one of the central ideas is in the bot ecosystem is the idea of uh, master bots and slave bots. Uh, so essentially, you're going to have bots that are front end, kind of like Siri or Facebook M, um, Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, that summon other bots uh, to do tasks for them. So in the near future, you're going to be able to ask Siri for pizza. And, and Siri's going to be able to ask, you know, do you, do you want fries? Do you want burger? Do you want Coke with that? <laughs> and, and after a few interactions, uh, Siri will know all your preferences. It will know your credit card information. Uh, it will know that you like to order pizza from this specific restaurant. And, and it will even get deeper. It will know that you like to order pizza at, uh, you know, 1 p.m., uh, on Sundays right before the game. So at 12 p.m. it might preempt you and say, hey, do you want to order that pizza? I could have it at your house by one for the, for the football game. Um, another cool thing is that we're going to have a lot of bot-to-bot -bot interactions. They're going to happen on the, um, on the enterprise level and on the B, uh, B2B side. So you're not going to uh, see some of these things firsthand, but you're going to nevertheless be the ben beneficiary of them. So this brings us back to the long tail effect, right? Um, if you look at a website right now, uh, most websites are more like uh, magazines than they are uh, like apps. It's just static content. If you and I go to, um, if you and I go to, let's say the Ralph Lauren website, we'll see the same thing. But in the future, going to a website, uh, which will, will have a lot of AI in it, and in some cases may be powered by bots, will be a lot more like uh, it will be a lot more like walking into the mall and automatically being in your favorite store. And not only are you in your favorite store, you're in your favorite part of the store and you're looking at that shirt that you've been thinking about buying. So uh, a lot of the clutter and a lot of the things that we're not interested in is kind of going to fall away and disappear. And, and websites um, are going to become far more interactive. Um, also, one of the things that we're seeing right now, one of the trends with, with bots, and I get this a lot from a user experience point of view, because right now a lot of people that play with bots are not very impressed, uh, and this is slowly changing. It's, it's on the uptick, and, and part of it is because the AI is still getting there. It's not quite there yet, but even if they, when the AI gets there, and it's very useful, there will still be a GUI, because we're so used to having a GUI element to interact with, and this is something that we're already seeing. Uh, Facebook's in, in introduced the GUI element uh, and bots. So a lot of bots of the future are going to be more like instant apps that you can talk to. What essentially this is going to have is it's going to give bots a really, really high uh, long tail effect. So how close are we to all of this? Is this very far away into the future? How close are we to the automation? So I'll ask you guys. Um, if you look at all the tasks today that, um, that exist in the world, in jobs, how much, how many, what percentage of them do you think are automatable? Do you want to guess? 30. 20? Okay. Any other guesses? 80? <laughs> okay. So let's look at the answer. So um, McKinsey did this really interesting research. A lot of times companies do research on what percentage of jobs are automatable, but they looked at tasks instead because tasks are really the low-hanging fruit. They're the first thing that's going to go. And they looked at 750 different occupations in the United States, and they saw that about 45% of work activities could be automated. This is a day and a half of your average week. Okay? Now, certain occupations are, are going to have a really high automatable factor. Kind of like uh, transportation, for example, is almost at 100%. Uh, food prep, admin work, these are all in the 80th percentile and above. Um, but even really high-end jobs, like a marketing manager okay, or a CEO, uh, you could see a marketing manager making 120 a year has almost 15% that could be automated uh, out of their work week. A CEO might be around 5 or 10%. Um, and overall, this represents a really huge opportunity in the market. 
Uh, essentially, this would be a, a $2 trillion savings annually. So what does this all mean? I mean, a lot of times people are very afraid that we're all going to lose our jobs to AI and machines. Um, but there's good news in this. And the good news is that no one's going to lose their job right away. What's going to happen is that a lot of the menial tasks are going to get automated uh, first. And then with time, what's going to happen is we're going to be able to focus our human energies on things that are really far more important to us, things that matter, things that give, us, give our lives meaning and purpose. And I think the really cool thing is that ultimately we're going to be able to, um, to have our work count. Um, whatever we do, we're, it's actually going to have a much higher impact and make a big difference in the world compared to doing these manual tasks. All right. Thank you, guys. <laughs>